Yo, what's up gamers? It's the League Dad here. Real quickly, I just want to apologize and say that during this past episode recording, uh, we had some technical difficulties and we were not able to get a bod. And so, uh, <laughs> boomer brain over here, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so what we have is just a graphic for you with the audio of the podcast. Uh, however, I did want to take this opportunity to remind you that if you are driving, working out, or maybe even taking a poop, feel free to pop on that podcast uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, uh, then please leave us a five-star rating and a review. It really does help. Uh, but until next time, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Peace. What's up, all inners, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast presented by Excellency Esports. I am the League Dad, and as always, joined by Kevin Mitchell and Alistair, and we are so excited to have you here on the show. Yes, lots of things happening. Uh, I'm sure if you guys have been browsing the interwebs, you've seen uh, all the drama talk uh, about the imports, uh, the import rules specifically. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more about this show moving forward and something that I would ask you as a listener to do because I'm really excited about this. Uh, we really want this show not to be another, you know, kind of the dive or not really like a hotline league. We want this show to kind of be in representation of what the fans feel about things in the LCS, right? So we want you to not just listen to this podcast. We want you to be a part of it. And so you're saying, League Dad, how can I do that? How can I be a part of the podcast and the discussion? I'm glad you asked because you can join our Discord. And in our Discord, there's lots of things there. And we want to keep an ongoing conversation, especially about the LCS. So if you want to be a part of that and join an awesome community of people, really just people who like to keep things lighthearted and banter back and forth with our teams and really just give an inside uh, look and opinions on how we feel about the league, then join our Discord. The link will be in the show notes, uh, but you can also tweet us at the All In Podcast, uh, connect with us there, and we can hit, hook you up with a Discord link. I wish it was easier, you know, like an easy URL that I could give you, but unfortunately, Discord doesn't do that unless you're a partner and have a bazillion people. So, uh, but join the Discord for sure. Like I said, this is your podcast. This is a fan podcast. We want you to be a part of it um, and not just a listener because it's always fun to get a collective kind of pulse of what's going on in the LCS. All right. With that out the way, here's the most important thing we have to talk about right now around the web AKA Reddit and Twitter, we have this import rule and the lifting of the import rule. Um, so just a real quick synopsis, if you guys are wondering what the heck are you talking about? I haven't seen this in Twitter or Reddit. Basically the teams, all the teams had a media day and when asked about this import rule, most of the owners said they either wanted to see it removed or modified somehow, uh, or they just dodged the question. Now, uh, this led many fans uh, and players react in an opposite fashion, saying that they didn't really want this rule to be lifted. I think for obvious reasons, if you're a fan listening, most likely, I'm not saying all, but maybe, you know, there's a high chance that you are against this rule too. And, you know, for obvious reasons, you know, we want ownership of our league. Well, here's the kicker. The drama kicks in when Jack responds to a Reddit post, which I'll link in the show notes as well. Uh, and Reggie also responds to Vulcan. Uh, you know, other league personalities jump in. It's just crazy. Dignitas happens to go two and one, including beating TSM, who Reggie was talking about keeping, uh, you know, lifting the import rule. And they troll him by saying uh, no imports, no imports on the Twitter. And so all this stuff erupted. So let me pause right there. Take a breath. And uh, let me get your guys' thoughts. You know, Kevin Mitchell, Alistair, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? What you've been seeing uh, around the web, your opinions. If you got any insight to this at all, then, you know, go ahead and air it out right here. Uh, yeah, Reggie and Jack, I hope they're doing a bit because if they're not doing a bit, they need PR managers. I don't know what the heck their Ooh, tweets yeah. were. Um, well, the tweet that Reggie did to Vulcan was like, if you didn't have LCS, you'd be working a minimum wage job. Like, what? How could you say that to somebody? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, especially, probably, and especially to a player who's arguably one of the best sports. I mean, regardless, right now. saying that That's to just crazy. another player, like another person in your yeah. org, it's literally Jack, Jack and Reggie are friends, right? That's Jack's player. That's Jack's, like, what was it, $2 million support that he dropped. So 
Uh, I mean, Jack did the tweet regarding like the racism and xenophobia, and everyone was just like, "What? That's a question mark ping." I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just read that real quickly for you know our listeners who might not know exactly what happened. I mean, I was kind of vague, but basically there was a Reddit post on the C9 Reddit subreddit, uh, and it was just basically a fan saying how they were kind of uh, sad to see this push by owners, you know, especially Jack, who he felt had done a lot for the amateur uh, North American scene, you know, building players up. He has a history of doing that, and he was just saying that he he didn't really want to see a team of like five Koreans come in and, you know, make the finals because it wouldn't feel like our team. But instead of really addressing the, you know, the the fan and his sadness about it, Jack basically says that his comment of not a bunch of Koreans was distasteful and considered racist. And he's like, I don't support xenophobe, ze- you know, xenophobia or racist comments. And he deflected yeah. totally. And it kind of turned into this big thing where it's like, dude, that, that wasn't the point. And so it kind of went back and forth and people were really not on Jack's side because obviously he wasn't addressing the question. He was just calling the guy racist and you know, it is whatever. So, so clearly deflection, right? Like nobody reads that in the context of like, okay, maybe some people do and he should have worded, like, worded it better. Like the guy who said not a bunch of Koreans or whatever, but like we're talking about because it's like Korea is one of the best regions and you don't want to have a North American legal one. Like, Jack is clearly deflecting and not hitting the actual message. And it it just screams like all these org owners are very in favor of moving the import rule and they just want to buy a win. They just want to buy a win. They're not actually interested in developing North American talent no matter what they say. I mean, the thing is, they're businessmen, right? Their main priority isn't the league. Their main priority is income, right? Yes. So if you can get a grandmaster Korean player who's not getting picked up anywhere, you can pay them, uh, to quote Doublelift, in mouse pads and win a win a championship and go to Worlds, you're going to make more money than, you know, what you are here. It's going to tank the average income of players. Someone like Core JJ, yeah. his income is going to be a tenth of what he makes now. And it's like, that. that's their priority, not the league. They care about money. Yes, yeah. but don't lie to our that's faces true. then and say that you want to yeah. promote NA talent. Don't lie to our faces and say, yeah, we're here, yeah. Uh, you know, getting rookies up on the stage. We, we're really proud of North America because of North American play. Like, all these org owners are just full of crap. Right, like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's I guess Rick Fox. It's such a it's such a <laughs> PR answer. Yeah, exactly. Where is Rick Fox? I even saw Reddit posters like you know with all this drama with that's the owners. I, I really miss uh, Rick Fox. What was a great? Uh, yeah, exactly. But look, I mean, you know what's crazy is here is that in that same thread, Jack finally kind of deflects even more and goes to like how they're investing all this stuff into developing the the amateur league, right? The amateur amateur scene and. You know, to me, it just doesn't make sense. They have been like right now is finally the time we're seeing a lot of amateurs get their shot at, you know, the, the pro scene. And you can't tell me that if you lift the import rule, you're going to also invest a lot of money into the amateur scene that the, that to me, that doesn't really mesh well, because when you when if that rule is lifted, you better believe they're going to be spending that money on getting, you know, the best talent they can get because that was their reasoning for lifting it. They want a talent pool that isn't restricted to just yeah. North America. And so, again, the I, money I has to really go somewhere. I really nice tweet that Revenge posted was like, if there was no import rule, would Revenge be playing on Immortals right now? No. Chances are no. He would be replaced by some no-name Korean or Chinese challenger player, right? That got moved over. Like, and Revenge is actually doing really, really well in Mortals, popping off and playing yeah. great for a rookie. And it's like, why is this conversation like steered so far from let's get some amateurs, let's get some rookies, we're spending all this money yeah. on imports, like, and it's not working out. Like Perks and you know, was looking really rough in the lock-in. You go to last year, right? Zven didn't even make it to world. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a full import team of like just it's like, why is the conversation just completely flip flopped? You go back to previous podcast episodes, and we're like, more North American, North American yeah. talent. If we want to actually win world. Do we have to do North America justice and go through the the process of, you know, a couple of years of hardships of just getting rookies in and out, yeah. see who's the new diamond in the rough? We lost double from Birksen, and then now we're at the exact opposite. It's and it, and it's like this is the first time like we're actually seeing what we've been asking for, right? Stop. 
you know, re-signing these old but well-known players and let's get fresh blood in there, right? And so now that we finally have it, you know, I am excited about seeing these new players get their shot. And, you know, again, this is just uh, a step backwards. And for me, like if you've been investing so much time in this and then all of a sudden you're saying we want the import rule lifted so we can, you know, have a a bigger talent pool, um, that's just counterintuitive to what we've been trying to do, which is develop our own homegrown talent. Um, but real quickly, I want to move. I want to go to more of the drama because this is what we, this is a fan show. So you know we gotta we gotta pull in more of the drama. You know, going to the Vulcan tweet. You know, he he said if you want a full import team, go buy a team in that region, right? And he's like, full Damwon comes to NA, plays on sixty ping the whole year. Uh, lesser competition, you know, in the solo queue and against the teams here. Do they beat the top LPL team? And of course they don't. And of course this is where the fun fun stuff comes in because uh, Double Live comes in and he basically copy and paste. Jack's uh, Reddit <laughs> response, and he's like, I don't agree with your opinion, and that's fine. Your comment, if you want full import team, go buy a team in that region, is distasteful and would be considered racist. So I'm basically trolling there, and then this is where it gets really spicy, and, and uh, Reggie basically says, ignorant tweet, if every LCS team left the LCS, you'll be out of a job, buddy, and probably be paid minimum. And that's where it's like, woo! And even like Dash chimed in. I, I believe there were other personalities that no. chimed in that were like, dude, your Mark chimed in was like, you are losing this, Reggie. That's not a good. That was no. so cringe, Reggie. Oh my God. This is just going back all the way from to, to last year when uh, Lena said all those things about Dardock and Lena said oh my. all those things about like trading and double ups. They leaked to the, like, they leaked the, uh, the, the call that he, he commented on on a Reddit post about Lenovo is it's not my fault. It's Lenovo. It's just like That's so they need a funny. PR team. These they need to just keep their mouth shut. That's the problem. These idiots. They can't need their freaking phones removed from their hands. If I oh, was God. an investor in TSM, I would just actually be like, if you tweet a single thing, I don't even care what it is. I am not giving you my money anymore. Like what the heck, <laughs> yeah. man? It's, but unfortunately, there's still people like Lee Dad who are going to continue to support them anyways. Yes. GSM. No, I, look, no, no, no. <laughs> listen to me. Like, I, I, you you would think, right? But look, I am a TSM fanboy, right? But this is where I draw the line because one thing that I will say is that the org, see, this is what, and I, I said this on a Reddit thread, like, this is where the organizations and the owners forget something. They forget that ultimately it's the consumers, i.e. the fans, that are paying their paychecks. Maybe not directly, but it's our viewership, which then turns into sponsorships, which then turns into paychecks for them to spend. And you know what? If they want to do a move that pretty much all the fans don't agree with, I say fans rally up and stop watching because they'll learn real quickly that we don't have to give you... It's not a given that you get to do this for a living. Yes. It's a, it, it is there because we as fans consume it uh, and we love it, but do something like that where we're already telling you that we would not like that. And I guarantee you they'll wake up real quickly because they forget that at the end of the day, the fans pay their paychecks. Um, like, And so that's that's what I'll say. Like, I'm a TSM fanboy, but no, I, I, that's where I draw the line yeah, yeah, with no. or, if, orgs like that. If they remove the import rule and we have a league full of random Korean challengers that no one knows, viewership yeah. will die. It will Absolutely. implode. I will stop watching. I will be bored out of my freaking mind, not not knowing who any of them are. You know, you go to an interview, right? They're not familiar to speak English. I like. Yeah. I'm sorry, but this well, is our native no language. Fan interaction. Yeah, there's no fan interaction, right? Like. Yep. But North America as a region yeah. has always always been opposed to like people who come here and can't even speak English because you can't communicate with your teammates, right? It's always been an issue mm-hmm. no matter what region you're in. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we got to clarify that, you know, it's not that we're against imports, right? I think, I don't think anybody's saying that, you know, because our team is full, you know, all our teams are, have the two or three imports. imports. Yeah. Yeah. The only team, which again, adds, actually adds a little more spiciness to this drama. The only team with no imports is Dignitas, who happened to go two and one. And again, one of the teams they beat was TSM, where again, Reggie made that comment. And so it was pretty funny that Dignitas won and they spam no imports on their, their Twitter after that. But I I will say that it's not against imports because, look, you got Bjergsen, you got Jensen, you got all of these players who, you know, have basically, you know, made their way here, their careers here, earning residency. And none of us here are saying that they're not they're not real NA, you know, players. 
No, I guarantee you, if they if they make it to Worlds, do well in Worlds, we're cheering for them. They are ours, right? So I think the whole the whole thing about the imports is not that we're against imports. It's just if you lift that rule and the whole team and the whole league becomes majority imports, then we've lost ownership. We've lost a sense of pride in the sense that they're, they're not really ours. And it becomes more of like, um, you know, they're just coming for a paycheck or whatever and, you know, winning, getting us I mean, that easy W. I want to add nuance to that argument because like, at the end of the day, like the importing is like the current import thing. Like we already have most of our top five teams besides Dignitas. Most of our top other five teams are at least 60% imports. Mm. And it's mostly not a problem. Some of our most popular players, Bjergsen, Core JJ, like yep. very well beloved players, Huni at points, not recently, but at points where it's also really well liked. Like the problem is that the current import rule. Uh, that is in place allows us to get to know these players. If you come to NA, you can't come for a quick paycheck because you will be way too expensive uh, if you're just coming for a quick paycheck. And to get that native residency to really up your value, like Huni has, like Santorin has, like Bjergsen did, requires commitment. You actually yeah. have to be like, I want to live in NA, learn the language ostensibly, unless like you're just so good you don't need to. But most people have improved their English since they came. And then by four years or whenever you get your green card, most people will like you. Um, yeah. One team that has been brought up a lot about, um, I think Voibre brought it up uh, as well as, uh, mostly Voibre was the most prominent and also yep. I Will Dominate. Mm -hmm. They brought up how LMQ took their spot that year from Worlds. Mm -hmm. And I remember that year, LMQ is like the quote unquote, the nightmare situation where like five, five players from another region come over. They weren't that good back in their old region and they basically stole Stomped. an NA spot. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say that because not everyone in the in who's watching might have been around back then. I will say that most people weren't too opposed to LMQ either. That's true. Um, after I a whole liked year, them. there was they were like pretty funny. They were Mimi, mm -hmm. like Shawe Shaw would just like say silly things all the time. They had their little cat. Oh, there was like a bunch of little memes with LMQ. Like they you they grew on you. So it's not the end okay, this is basically just trying to play devil's out. It's not the end of the world if we had imports. If it's all of NA was just like LMQ, Don Long, whatever, like these, like, but we got to know them. They learned English in the interviews here and all that. Like, I, I don't think it would be the end of the world. It, a viewership would drop, though. I, I play, I've i played games that were region locked in esports, and it's just not interesting, as as interesting. It's not being mm -hmm. racist per se, but it's just you're supporting NALCS. You want to probably yeah. see some some semblance of NA. And yeah, although sure. NA is a lot of diversity, at the end of the day, if they're not even like NA culture like Bjergsen is now or Singaporean yeah. or something, then is that really... NA, yeah. Is yeah. That really that, NA? That, and that's the point. It's like the ownership thing. And I will say like that was kind of a unique position because, or a unique situation. They were the only team, like I can't imagine if there were like multiple teams that were like that, if yeah. it would be the same reaction. But too, like you mentioned, they, they put a lot of effort into really trying to learn English, uh, learn our humor. They, they try to do interviews in English and it was just... They made content. As, yeah, they made content. And for us, that that was awesome because it was like, hey, they weren't just coming here to be like, look, we're we're the best. We're going to whoop y'all. Like, they were trying to be part of NA. And I think the fans here appreciated that. And we're like, yeah, come on in. Like, that's that's awesome. But again, unique situation. They're only team, only team like that. I think if there were more teams in the league that were full imports, it might be a different story. But I, I see what you're saying. There's a second quick example, though. Quantic sure. Gaming. Okay, Back yeah. Back in the day in Challenger. All yep. Korean team. They brought in a bunch of Koreans over to try to win challengers and they didn't qualify. That team was the only reason in my mind that the import rule even exists is because LMQ made it to Worlds that year. Yeah. Uh, because Quantic came over. They sent a whole Korean team. They said they were gonna stop. I think Loco was helping with them, or yeah, somebody Loco was helping was. coach that team. Yeah. And they got they got three would I think it was, in the challenger mm -hmm. finals. And we just all forgot about them. There were some good players on that Quantic squad. I'll, I'll look it up was later it during the podcast, but Ah, uh, no, no. Oh. Mad Life was Gold Coin United. Uh, okay. Mad yeah. Life was yeah, Gold Coin right. United. I remember that. But anyways, it, it, the point is that, like, I I think it can... It, it isn't the end of the world, but, like, let's not let's not lie. The reason why they're giving these PR answers, they're attacking the character of their fans, which, you know, never goes anywhere because mm -hmm. you're attacking one fan as a person who represents, like, someone who should be talking to, like, a million-person fan base or tens of thousands of people fan base. But the real, the real answer here is money, right? Like, we all know. Yep. It. We've all, like, alluded to it. Mm -hmm. It's like contracts they're not actually trying to buy their way to win worlds they're trying to 
make their stuff physically able to survive and then get to world, maybe get to world something. They want mm, their businesses yeah. to survive because yeah. the salaries are just, in, they're insane. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're, when we're talking about pro player contracts in esports right now, during COVID, which is when we don't have as much like tournaments and in-person like events mm -hmm. and we're getting contracts near pro sports that is a problem like it's really exciting but it's scary that that's screams of a bubble yeah it's true yeah so there needs to be some sort of balance where our contracts and what we're, pe we're paying people isn't in the millions right now because i don't think the league can support it but at the same time we're not just paying our players dirt cheap and we're only picking yeah. up basically no names because we don't want to pay people a lot of money so like there needs to be some sort yeah. of balance i totally agree um we've been change talking about this subject a long time what'd you say so change franchising or something like that for cool. it would be a good start because i mean look at for example golden guardians they finished 10th place four splits in a row or three splits in a row. i can't remember mm -hmm. they'd be gone and or you look at someone not necessarily they would they would well, beat a they would, could beat a challenger team to still be in it yeah, that's that's true. They they yeah. could be, but the chance they They're do that three better. times in a row when they go like one in seventeen or something like that is pretty low. Or you look at yeah. players like um, Stixe or Wiggly, who were on CLG for year year and a half or something, where they're at the bottom, they're just losing every game. They wouldn't be in the scene still. They they would yeah. have been gone. And it's stuff like that where you get increased salaries where it, the players don't have to worry about their job mm -hmm. yeah i mean the thing is is like it's true like they they would have been relegated i mean if golden guardians if covid didn't happen and the basketball team didn't lose so much money and they were able to keep the roster they had i mean that's basically 100 thieves they would be good this year um you know even if they didn't have someday but i want to take you know like I like how you, Kevin, were tank, kind of playing the devil's advocate role here and seeing is there any, you know, potential good that can come from, you know, possibly lifting the import rule? You kind of mentioned that maybe it wouldn't be so bad. And I was kind of trying to think about this, too. But here's a couple of reasons that I, I thought maybe this could be an argument for lifting the import rule. And I want to get you guys' thoughts. So uh, one, I was thinking maybe it would elevate NA talent. So we talk about bringing, you know, up NA talent. Well, what if we brought in tougher competition over here would be in our solo queue games, uh, would also be in scrims, you know, so we'd be scrimming much better teams regularly. Um, but also I think it would force, so a lot of people were saying, well, it would push all these NA players out of a job. True. Or it would force all NA players, uh, not just amateurs, but collegiate academy and even LCS pros to step up their game because they know they have a much harder talent pool to compete with because we all know that the infrastructure over there is much different and even the work ethic is much different and their view on League of Legends as a professional career is much different where these guys are playing all day every day you know and it would be a litmus test for you if you're in North America like and you want to be a pro do you have what it takes now that you are basically up against the best in the world. Like you're not just best in NA, you're you're up against the best talent pool no matter where they're from. And so it forces us, you know, and by us I mean NA players to have to be good, to have to dedicate themselves just as hard as them if we want to get a job. Yeah. And so that's my thinking. I want to let you guys speak against that for what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely disagree. Yeah, I disagree um, too. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Forget y'all. Right. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's spe speculation because we can't speak for people yep. who we don't know exist. Yep. I mean, obviously, they exist, but we don't know the personalities or anything, right? Yeah. But we can speak about you know past talent, right, who have come mm -hmm. over from Korea, for example. Or the most recent example, Perks. Perks comes over, popping off in another region, and now he's like looking kind of meh, you know? <laughs> Sword Art, another great example. Made semifinals, and now he Finals. doesn't even really look like a top three support. Mm. Yeah. Like, sure, he is high elo, but, like, it doesn't seem to really matter. Like, you can... How do I put this? It's very different going from playing on single-digit ping, where everyone is your skill level, to playing on 60 ping, where you feel like you're so much better and when you can only be so much better than your competition before you like can't really improve anymore right that's why um lck lpl have much better talents because they've 
everyone has a higher skill ceiling uh, than mm. the average player here, meaning everyone can constantly improve. We said this before last year about people like Double if not playing solo queue. If the best of the best aren't playing, how do you get to that level? Mm. And it's going to kind of ruin your drive to play if you're just raffle stomping everyone in solo queue. And then eventually you just get worse. Yeah, I agree in the same vein that we can look at past evidence. If we do bring over, let's say we bring over like 100 players from Korea and China and stuff like that, they're still playing on 60 ping. Like, because they have yeah. to be based in Los Angeles, right? Like, mm-hmm. I do think 60 ping is, is such an issue at the challenger level, at the pro level. It's such an issue. Like, until they change that, I don't know if you can really warrant it, right? Obviously, you know, a bunch of great players would come to NA to play on 60 ping just to, for the big paycheck and stuff. But like, if there was a removed import rule, but to say that it would elevate the region, it might a little bit. But I think once you go right back to Worlds and you start playing against like other Korean and other uh, European and Chinese players, you're going to find that yeah. these players who are playing on 60 ping are significantly worse than they would have been yeah. if they just stayed over there. I really do think so. Also, True. it's like when you're talking about the culture and the idea that, you know, NA culture in Solo Q was also fairly toxic, right? Like not a lot of FFing, a lot of trolls, a lot of like an overabundance of one tricks compared to other regions. That's not going to mm-hmm. change very quickly. It's going to take a long time to change that. Right. So how long are we willing to bank on things will change if we do bring in 200 Korean Chinese players into the challenger scene, have them climb yeah. up? Is the entire NA Challenger and Masters, Grandmasters community just going to change overnight in a year, in two years, in five years? Are all the one tricks going to start playing other roles, right? There are people in Challenger right now, if you don't get your exact champion or your exact role, you just run it down, right? You have to Mm -hmm. dodge or they're not going to dodge and you have to dodge them or you just lose the game. That doesn't happen as much. It does still in other regions, but like Mm -hmm. that sort of NA mentality in solo queue is so toxic. Like I think those are the things we need to fix rather than importing. Because I, I think importing wouldn't fix it. So. I mean, I don't think there's any way to fix that. Um, I mean, unless Riot somehow magically is able to start punishing people <laughs> for these mm-hmm. behaviors because that's a whole nother topic. Well, look, I'm glad that you argued against that because I was really trying to see, well, like, can they have, because I never heard any valid arguments from the orgs other than, you Money. know, we just want to, yeah, we just, well, that's what it is. We all know it, but, you know, other than the fact that, you know, oh, they just want to ha- have access to the best talent pool. I was, I was like not buying it. So, um, well, yeah. I have I'm, a, I still have a valid argument. No, okay. maybe not valid, but I have a slightly more valid argument than xenophobia um uh, I have a what do you mean play. that's a valid argument i'm just kidding good Go ahead. god he's he's been living he's been living in la for too long yeah um Seriously. so here's the thing the it will not it will elevate na's level a lot because in reality what happens when all these people come they're not going to play so we all know that like mm-hmm. there will be a few who play so can stop the ladder they sit at the top like sword art and they won't get that much better they might even be worse in pro play but the reality is that they're probably going to play in houses. There's going to be a bunch of people who are like, well, Solo is pointless and I'm still competing for a paycheck. So therefore, where am I going to get my practice? And the, mm. you already see this with Core JJ. It was like, hey, why haven't we not organized? Like if Core JJ never came over, it is pretty possible. There's not a lot of impetus to even like organize these in houses because he's one of those like oh. high profile figures getting the conversation going, saying we need to be playing Solo queue together. We need to be mm. in houses together. We need to organize these. I'm going to teach NA by how myself to do it. <laughs> how to do better, even though it has that no guy. bearing on my job. Yeah. The other big argument is like, let's be real. Like we are fans and we really wish to see NA, but at the same time, we're also like, I have said it myself, at least last split, not as much this split, but last split, when I see a team like Golden Gardens or even early this split, I'm like, I don't want to watch that match. This, mm. this is like, this is literally a pointless match. And like, luckily we have Dignitas who hopefully we'll be able to keep that top three top four na team only dream mm. alive but like they're an outlier like we get bored when we see uh like FlyQuest was a all na team when they started golden guardians was an all na team when they first uh franchised and yeah. we flamed the crap out of them we didn't give them a shot so like these orgs have been told multiple times by the fans at least money wise in terms of engagement in terms of fan whatever uh fan 
interactions and impressions mm-hmm. that like they don't care about all in it. They care about winning. Like yeah. our most popular teams are TSM C9 and then a, and a distant third, like probably TL, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe a hundred thieves, depending mm-hmm. on what the number yeah, is. It, it's and these teams are all teams that have won the split or gotten top two. Flyquest yeah. is only popular because they got top two twice. Mm-hmm. And they have like they have cool branding, but that cool branding doesn't matter until you do well. If we want NA to survive, something drastically needs to change. And that if we just let that bubble keep growing till salaries break, like yeah. who's paying Perks's paycheck? Who's paying exactly. Swordar's paycheck? Who's paying Huni's paycheck? Those guys, a lot of people are gonna be out of job whether yeah. our feelings like it or not. And I don't know if removing the import rule is the best way to do it, but I know it's definitely a guaranteed way to solve the problem. It's just, mm. it's an awful way to tear off the bandaid, right? Yeah. So what do we do? Import I think that the import you. rule is you. one way to do it. I don't know what the better way to do I, it is. I like improved the solo queue. That seems pretty nice, especially for a personal thing. Can you please? I mm-hmm. would like to not right, play on right? I agree too. As a, as a solo queue player who hasn't played in forever, I wish I could queue up and not feel existential dread. Yeah. Even if I'm mm-hmm. better than average than my teammates, I, I hate it. And mm-hmm. that should never happen. I've played in other servers, it's way better. I, they, it, okay. I played on China's be server, fair, it's so much better to play the to game. To be fair, Rai has done a lot of recent things to help solo queue, right? There's chat bans and mm-hmm. bans are more frequent. Um, LP yep. gains, if you have an AFK, are less harsh, mm-hmm. right? They've done yeah, a lot feels, of these little things. Uh, they yeah. just need to keep going. And we need to be patient too, right? Yeah. So. Uh, I think we've been talking a lot about this topic. Um, yeah, like, know. let's, I mean, it's good. I mean, it was something that ha- we had to talk about it because it was all over everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, so we needed to. That's the fan pulse, yeah. right? That's what yeah. we've been talking about. One more about. one more segment of uh, this whole carrying on the theme of, like, fan interaction and, and fan uh, discussion. So something that I want to introduce is this Discord discussion segment where people from our Discord have, uh, you know, topics they talk about. And we'll take some big ones that we see or have been good topics to talk about about and we'll bring them right here on the show so that's another reason for you to join the discord and you know start talking in there because we'd like to feature it on the show so this one actually comes from wizward uh and he wizard. made the take he made the take tl won't finish top three wow uh, he thinks c9 or well the discussion was basically c9 tsm and 100 these will take the top spots what are your guys' thoughts on that i Ke- kevin you don't need to uh answer i already wait, know wait, i want to say, speak up for wizard <laughs> i'm speaking up okay. for my boy oh, you're, oh I'm okay saying he made this take before the last day of lc uh he did yeah. so, he did just so remember that before you judge our boy. Okay, you guys. Also, okay, I'll, okay I'll just to be clear for all you XNC viewers, Wizard is the ADC slash jungler. I don't know for Dark Side Academy. So if uh, TL does make a top three, go go flame him. Okay, Dark Side Academy <laughs> ADC slash jungler. Okay, there you go. Wow, it's Easy. like you gave him their you gave him the address <laughs> to everyone to go be a target. Nice. Now everybody's not gonna want to say nothing. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, yeah, I mean that's yeah, a good man. take though. I mean like. Look, I mean, I think there is some validity. I don't think it's terribly out of the blue. Um, honestly, I don't know if TSM will be in that three either, even though I'm a TSM fan. I think it's more likely Team Liquid would be in the top three uh, and less likely. Like, I think there's more of a chance for TSM and 100 Thieves not to be in the top three. But that's my my thoughts, even though I'm a TSM fan. All right, Alistair, Mitchell, what do you guys think? Um, I mean... I'm unsure. We watched them in lock in, and now they're five and four, which is a big surprise. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, this is that they're five and four after the first round robin. There's five, so there's still four to go. They still have was that 45 game? Or sorry, uh, 36 games, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Um, I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> and that's and that's not including the playoffs halfway through uh, yeah, for yeah. MSI and stuff like that. Um, the meta is going to change a lot before Worlds. It's we're gonna see changes this week due to because of jungle. Mm-hmm. I think it's too early to say who's going to go to worlds. I the only team I would be comfortable saying is going to go would be Cloud Nine because we've seen I, I think just their infrastructure as an organization is pretty good. And we're gonna see, they they've played in a lot of metas and they've done well in Remember a lot. Remember last of year. Ow. Yes, <laughs> I know. But when your AD carry is running it, it happens. But Alistair, you're completely not answering the question. Is Team Liquid yeah, top that, three or well, not? That, that's what I'm trying to get to. It, I'm, I'm taking a <laughs> backwards way of getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a politician. I, I would take. I, I would probably <laughs> put TL under the top three just because. Oh. Sorry, I, I, sorry, I would. I would put them on top. Three. 
Okay. 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 All right. Sorry, sorry. Did I, I say okay. under? I meant on the top. You said under. No, okay. I meant on the top. <laughs> uh, I'm already okay. dead, bro. You killed me. For this, for the same reason, I put. Uh, Cloud9 there is just because I think they have okay. the infrastructure and I think they Makes have sense. the individual players just to make it happen. I yeah okay. I I think it's just organization difference. Yeah. You look at yeah. a team like Dignitas. I I think they're really good. I'm not taking away from them, but I feel like once we get farther in, there's just going to be a team like Hundred Thieves, TSM who there we go. kind of have. They just are better. Yeah. You know what I mean? TSM are monkeys. I, I, yeah, I believe. All right, what about you, Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're top three, man. Like, what's okay. You're yeah. a freaking right. monkey. There's no way, man. Sorry, look, Wiz word, I what? No, Seraphine, look, okay? hey, give him a break. <laughs> Wiz word, no. I, hey, look, don't let them discourage you because of who you play. That's just xenophobia. Coming from a youth player. <laughs> Coming from a youth player. <laughs> See, look at this guy. Listen, this guy. By the way, when he loses predictions in last place, he will be forced to play Yumi on live stream. Yes. So be sure to check oh, that yes. out. But yes. look, oh, hey, going oh. back to going back to my boy Wizward. Thank you for. Uh, you know, contributing, making that hot take. I don't think it was completely out of the blue because there are some good teams. I do think, though, at the when it's all said and done, uh, even me as a TSM fan, I do think Team Liquid have a better chance of remaining in the top three when everything is all said and done. Okay, now with that said, let's take a look at what I think was the feature match of the week just because on paper it seemed like the best match, which this past week was Team Liquid versus C9. Team Liquid wins in 30 minutes, a really clean game. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? I, now, I wrote down just some draft notes, some game notes slash highlights, and some post-game stat notes. But just generally, what did you guys think of the game? game? What are your Which thoughts on team? both teams? TLC9. C9 versus Team Liquid. C9 versus Team Liquid. Oh, yes. This game. Yes, this game. Yeah, I didn't like C9's draft at all. 0%. I mean, this is the TL we kind of come to expect, right? Yeah. I mean... Show up when it counts? No, that just you're a clean game like that. I, I don't know what's been happening. Something Clearly something's going wrong that we don't know about. Maybe, maybe they're just egoing. I don't know. Maybe they think the first round robin doesn't matter. I, we can make yeah. excuses for them. We don't know. But, I mean, th this is kind of what I feel like we expect from Team Liquid right now. Um, I mean, Jensen should. did say he was he was tired, or they were tired after the lock in tournament. I mean, I guess that's a lot of mental mental energy spent. But I, on an interview, that's at least what he was saying. Um, I mean, so it could be. I, I mean, it could be a little bit of I know, winners. I know for a fact this wrong team. Liquid. They just take fights they don't need to take over and over again. Every single loss, every single game they've lost, hmm. they've been in an okay or winning position in the early game, and they just take a random fight and they get outplayed or they have a bad engage and they lose and they die. And then you know what they do? They go for another fight and they die because they're behind in gold now. They just fight. Hmm. Um, in this game, right? I really think Team Liquid didn't do anything else. They just had a better draft, right? I'm pretty sure Sven picked Ash into the Hecarim pick. Um, it was miserable, right? Uh, perks, I mean, yeah, your Lucian was fine, but like C9 was just making some of the greediest rotations, some of the greediest like map movements and pathing that, you know, Team Liquid, which is just a team that's just running in and fighting constantly and looking for picks constantly. If you take a greedy pathing, you're going to get punished and die. But if C9 just played smart and controlled, I actually do think even with their worst draft, they could have beaten Team Liquid. Team Liquid looks to me right now really, really bad. They're a team that has really good mechanics and good laning, and they have no real game plan. They just fight. They go forward, they see an objective, they see an opponent, they fight, they kill. So yeah. that's what happened this game, and they, they came up heads, in my opinion. So that's my team with analysis. And I, I, going back to the draft again, like I, I rewatched it, right? To me, the, the highlight of that draft was that Tom Kench pick. Because at the time, you know, uh, C9 had showed four engaged champs. They had showed Gragas, Skarner, Ash, and Thresh. And so with the one Tom Kench pick, you get a ton of value there because there's just so many things that kind of mess up that, you know, any one of those engages. And we saw it clearly during the game. So to me, and Tom Kinch hasn't been picked that often because typically there's some kind of engage support uh, that's kind of been the thing. Um, you know, unless, I'm sorry, unless it's like a Senna Tom Kench type deal. But, um, you know, to have the Tom Kench against this kind of comp, I felt was really 
uh, really a good value pick, um, and we saw that uh, during during the play here. Particularly, um, I think the game really started when that first you know that first dive bot lane that Team Liquid had, where they committed all five people um, towards a C 9s bot lane. Uh, if you remember, um, they had seen. Perks had already burned his TP. They had seen him back, and so basically they went all in for that dive uh, on their bot lane. And even Oriana, who you know was Jensen in the mid lane, walked all the way from his lane, which the wave was frozen. But he went there to even pick up a kill. And so I think from there, that's where it kind of got them that that first real big push. Yes, I, I agree, right? And that was in the moment. It looked like a great play for Team Liquid, but I think if Cloud9 played it better, they could have came up go ahead by just staying in their lanes and getting turret plates, right? Like committing mm. five people like that doesn't is not a good play if the enemy team is confident. Mm, I agree. Uh, that's why I hate yeah. these plays. Like it looks good, but this isn't how any gets better. A better team will punish this so unbelievably hard. Like I hate that play, honestly, because it just because it works. I too. mean, like Liquid uh, Liquid punished it unbelievably hard, as we saw. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the story of this game was Liquid literally finally reacting to one of their lanes getting targeted by like mm -hmm. four people and then they would also always have four people like 10 seconds or five seconds later in a delayed counter attack and they would win every time this was the first time you saw like bot lane get like huge support in the regular season or top lane get huge support and like it was c9 would start with a play that would go plus one or plus two and then they would get smacked afterward by the the roam down because like they didn't have jensen hard freezing mid as they were talking about uh, yeah that was the other way around but no, it was most of the plays were TL reacting to a C9 play. If, if you watch it back, there might have been one that C9 reacted and just got outplayed. But I, I, I thought the five man it, Team Liquid could all run into bot lane was C9 made a play. They did initiate. Well, Team Liquid did initiate that. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, Gragas was the first one to TP down there. And, and then as a result, um, all five you know, Alfari, all five of Team Alfari, 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 and so and at that then... point, if you look at the mini map, that's when you know once Alfari went in, or I, and Alfari waited until Graga showed up. Um, once Alfari committed, then Jensen had a good freeze on his wave, and he just started walking over there. So you know, I think it was fine because Perks would lose some minions because he had to come. Um, I think he ended up not, and he just pushed the wave, and so uh, you know, Jensen did end up losing a few minions, but. Uh, I don't know, man. I I, I I can see what you're saying, but I think I'm more along the lines where I think that was a good Team Liquid Maybe. play. I think yeah. it was proactive. Um, and again, had Gragas not TP'd there, maybe it works out better for C9, but since he did, you know, Team Liquid reacted I, appropriately. Maybe it was a fine play in that moment. definitely misplayed. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it was a fine play by Team Liquid. I am of the opinion, though, in general, for their last couple of losses and some of their wins, that they are over-proactive. They're rotating too much they're being too aggressive they're engaging way too randomly that has been my opinion um maybe in this game it was fine they actually cleared things up and they're trying to look for only the correct engages against c9 but even so i felt like there are some times where well, like look. team liquid got away with stuff they shouldn't have against c9 in that game i mean so. okay so going to your point about like if they commit that many people and instead just getting plates team liquid actually did that at one point because not too long after c9 uh committed four people at least to dive tl's bot lane and that was when i gotta break this play down because tom kent <laughs> core oh, kk on tom kent yes. was freaking amazing let me just break because I, I jotted down yeah, play yeah, by yeah, play was, look yeah. he eats tactical after the ash arrow hits him and then he jukes the thresh hook. Then he gets Skarner ulted and flashes, but gets flayed back by uh, by Thresh. Then he uses a shield. Then he gets the shield back and dodges uh, Lucian ult and Zon or stopwatches. And so he survived for so long. And at that time, Hecarim was already getting the rift. He got Scuttle, top Skull, and he got the Raptors uh, from you know uh, from Skarner. So he was you know he made a lot out of that play. And just by surviving that long, they both ended up dying. And they got one kill in return, but hey, that was a pretty good reaction, and to, honestly, just a really good outplay by uh, by Core. Yeah, yeah, maybe C9 also should take the same advice too. Then stop over. <laughs> I mean, again, <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right in a sense of like what we've been seeing. I'm saying this game in particular. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Team Liquid actually played 
their game correctly, and that's you know, okay. That's I can beautiful see. Thing to yeah. see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Yeah, yeah I think so. Woo! Yeah, hey, yeah. I actually lawyered <laughs> Mitchell yeah, yeah. for no, once. I, hey, it was a team it effort, was, me and you, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, we we kind of looked. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Sweet, man. I, I will. I will okay. give credit to Perks though. Perks played amazing oh, yeah. he played evolution good. most of that game in so terms the of the time he got caught out walking through the river. And just die for free. <laughs> okay. And yes, he true. did get caught out once, but like most of that game, he was basically the only reason C9 looked dangerous. Like mm. I saw some like insane plays where he's just frontlining as Lucian, and just pretty much the only reason that team looked scary at all. Yeah. And I was I was very impressed. Um, yeah. Clearly, he he has still some weaknesses, but I I, I was like, oh, I, I I get why you would sign a superstar mid laner because yeah. like if the meta turns to mid lane, this. It's gonna be really scary. Oh, it's a it meta, we have a whole year for this this split mm -hmm. now or yeah. this season. What yeah. do you say? If the meta turns to mid lane, I am hoping and expecting perks to do really well because the meta is not mid lane focused at all, and yeah. that's why may maybe. As hey, well, but look but I mean, look at it though. C nine is still in first, right? So despite the loss, they're still playing pretty darn well. I mean, again, that's you know that's one of the games where yeah, I, they, they I, probably I disagree. Have I think but... both Team Liquid and C nine are suffering from the same problems. Where C nine is just perma mm -hmm. engaging, perma fighting randomly for no reason and not actually making smart plays, but because they're better individually, it works out. Like sure. I've been feeling that way for like. At least this weekend. But and maybe, last but maybe when you are that good, you you need to do that because no, you, you already know you're. No, you I... don't. no, no, no. Hear me out real you, quick before you rebuttal. Actually, I see no. Alistair. I see Alistair about to rebuttal. Let me. No, just... I'm with you. I'm with me... you. Oh, you, you're okay. I'm with you. Yeah, because, because how often do we pr praise yeah. LPL for doing the exact same thing? For my example, man, right my there. team last split in Excellent C. We were not as a team better than most teams we were just individually better players and we coin flipped mm. fights but we won because we had better mechanics i think it is yeah. one of the best ways to play the game uh, and uh, i think yeah. in a strategic standpoint it might not look the best and if you screw it up it looks really bad i agree but if you look at teams like look at toppy sports and jdg last year that was half of their game plan was they just ran at you coin flipped a fight that was 51 49 or something and they just won because they were better yeah. and they lost i i, yeah, also, I know what, but they uh, won. gaming was the best team and they didn't do no, that i know but look at lpl and look, i mean damn one did the same thing we were literally saying last year that damn one and damn one it was the korean version of no i Sports disagree Street. damn one does not just randomly point for the fights especially they in the did finals. It a lot they didn't do it a lot they would have prio on objectives and fight when people came they didn't coin flip random fights in a leading position to potentially okay, well, win this game let's let's r ring it back though i think what what i'm trying to say is that like what because they are better talented wise i think they should try to execute those plays because if they just win off of just being better and and not try to look for proactivity, like it's the season. Like I feel like they should try to do those things because when they get into international play, they can't just sit back and not do anything. I uh, there's a difference between being like aggressive and proactive and just fighting randomly, right? Like yes, Dan Wong Gaming, if they're fighting for scuttle at three minutes and all five are TPing for that scuttle, that's freaking ridiculous. And then they. It's, it's not, but it's not necessarily a coin flip to them, right? They're thinking they win that because they have better champions in the early game, or they have positioning, right? Or they have good wards. Like, it, okay, we were saying the same thing I, with TL and C9. If you're saying that TL had the same, had the better yes, TL and C9. I'm saying about C9 is that they're actively making plays that shouldn't work if their opponents were better. Like Rexai, like there was the Rexai game against Hundred Thieves. Their blabber, he just is running through and ignoring camps to just go for a 50-50 like flip dive onto mid lane, right? I think it was level three on the rec side, where if the enemy jungler was actually like slightly a couple seconds different in his padding, he would have been walking through mid, going from top jungle to bot jungle at the same time, and that dive would have gone terribly for C9. But what if Blabber just went and took jungle instead? It's a more consistent play that he comes out ahead on. Like there are these things that I, like Team Liquid, when they're ahead in gold, they're just going for fights randomly and losing because they have bad positioning. They are just engaged. Like I am actually specifically blaming core JJ. He's just going for fights on like rel Leona and stuff when he doesn't need to be, they're in a winning position. If they wait for just the next dragon fight and then everybody shows up and they're there first and they have the gold lead, they just win the game. Are you telling me that that's that them engaging and then losing is bad?
or as good. I mean, like now, I'm not saying that what they're. Pl- I'm not saying that they had good play, but what I'm saying is, I think the philosophy and what they're trying I, I, to do. I think I it's. Agree. I think it's. I look. I think it's proactive. I think they need to need to try those things, especially if they are the best. And if well, they, they need to if figure out fail, when is a good time to go for plays. Yeah, and but not how plays. do you? But how do you figure that out if you don't ever try? Like, yeah, uh, you tried it, and then they lost four games. Of exactly. It. You, try it, you lose exactly. one or two games, but then they, but then they, but then they beat C9. But then they beat C9. So okay. what I'm saying is that they try it and fail, but you learn from it, bro. Like, how you ever not yes. learn okay, from it if you don't argument? try? Where is the argument for Daniel Gaming then? Huh? That they're just coin flipping fights? They're not. They're not just coin flipping fights. Yeah, but that because that's a team that recognizes they've learned and recognized no, when you, those fights. You guys are... were saying to me that Dan Mal Gaming is just coin flipping fights and just winning randomly. I right? didn't say that, but I, I, I can't okay, speak. I, I, well, look, sure. I can't. I can't speak to LCK LP. I don't watch it, and I'm not he- as heavily involved as you know looking at NA team. So I'll bring it back to NA, and whatever happens, LPL LCK is fine. But I will say that that style of play, if It is effective because we've seen it in LPL. We've seen the aggressive early plays. I'm not saying that they should just go because that's what they're doing. But in order to actually get adept to that style, they need to take chances, even if they're bad, because then they know that wasn't a good play. And then they chalk that up to experience and then move on. But because they're good players, they need to try those things. And that's where I'm saying, like, I'm not saying what they've done so far is good. Keep it in scrims, man. I don't don't know. know. Whatever. Fine. Keep it in scrims. But like... It's not like they're doing this in the lock-in, right? I'm saying that, yes, fine. What you're saying, League Dad, yes, okay. They messed up, and then they, they beat C9 later, right? They, de- they Then they devolved. They got worse from lock-in until those, those four yeah, losses. I, I agree. Then what happened there? Then that's well, the real that's problem. that's what I'm then, saying. Like, you right? can't... Because like, I... you're, you're saying that this is what Team Liquid did to get better, right? They made these bad engages, and then they improved to beat C9, right? Well, that should have been a thing in the first place then, because I'm just disagreeing that Team Liquid shouldn't have made it any of these bad engages at all, because they should know. They should already know, because they're not bad, right? Eh, I'm, ag- I'm going to agree to disagree and move on. They shouldn't have nah. known. They should know you're, not to make you're these not bad conv- engages. You're not going to convince me, man. You're not going to convince me, but l- 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 we Lee need Dad. to move on, because we could talk about this forever. But. You're not, you're not going to convince <laughs> anybody. Hey, you know what? In Discord, l- Discord let convince me know who anybody. you agree with. The three of us? Or My Mitchell. team would agree with Boo me. this man, everybody. I'm just kidding. How is it the three of us? It's just you, <laughs> it's not by the way. The, well. don't the, the take premise them. of the question you don't get to take is them. a little bit offside there. <laughs> yeah. You don't get to take them, Lee Dad. Wait. Uh-uh-uh. It's just you and me, buddy. You're alone, I don't care. Friend. Okay, vote. One me one. or Me or Mitchell. I don't care. <laughs> You're I don't alone. care. I, I'm... I will destroy you. Destroy me? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so stupid. All right, I'm moving on to <laughs> predictions. Yep, let's move on. Predictions is time. Okay. Now, yeah. last week I made some bad decisions, <laughs> and um, I almost did. You almost did. <laughs> so here's how it ended up for last week: was Kevin was in first with ten points, Mitchell, Alistair, you both got nine. I got eight, and the coin got eight. Oh. Uh, cumulatively, oh, okay. cumulatively, 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 uh, me and me and Mitchell are tied. But uh, mix it even spicier. Hey, one, two, one. <laughs> I will beat you in that then. Uh, hey, look. Uh, so, but I don't know if we d- talked about because we just introduced the punishment thing. I don't know how it's going to work with the cumulative score. Are we still keeping it or what? We'll talk about that off offline, I guess. But right now, that's how cumulatively it stands. Is that me and Mitchell? Me and Mitchell are tied for first. Some of the notable prediction differences. Uh, Dig against Fly. I was the only one. Look, I think I might need to give up hope on Fly Quest, but yes. they lost against Dig to Sass. Uh, All right, the T. TSM EG uh, game. TSM won that. Uh, you guys, Kevin and Alistair voted. Uh, I didn't have a choice. That's that. we yeah, that's true. Yeah, Imagine uh, voting EG. We yeah, all I got the up. TL EG game wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> voting EG. <laughs> yeah, that EG, was pretty BG crazy. Liquid. And uh, I mean, unfortunately, with how EG looked against TSM, we got to yeah, talk about that vote. game too, by the way. TL yeah. versus EG. What the heck was that? I don't know. Well, look, forget about it. It's in the past because we're going on to predictions. Um, oh, finally, uh, the other one was C9 against TL. <laughs> All of us voted C9 except for Kevin. <laughs> yeah, dang, super fan. He got these. Hey, I was right. right. It was a pretty easy win. I wasn't sweating at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Holy cow. Yeah, right. What's up? That's a meme. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's move on to this coming up week. Uh Got a lot of good games here. First first day is C9 uh, versus Golden Guardians. 
I don't think anybody's going Golden Guardians here, right? I am voting for Golden Guardians to lose. Yes, oh, there, it is. there we go. There it is. Maybe people <laughs> haven't watched the podcast Ooh. last week, so I can make yeah. the same change. Or any of the episodes. Kevin, I mean, Mitchell Coins doesn't. Guardians. Oh, okay, wow. Golden Guardians. Yeah, Mitchell never uses I've that. I've never joke. used that joke cool. in my life. I don't know what you're never. That's never the first all. time he's ever about, used oh, that. But joke. the next game, I really want to get to that quickly. Which one? Oh, the next the game? The next one. All right, here it is. All Team right. Liquid versus TSM. Oh, I'm going to start cool. off. Coin is TSM. Oh, boy. Kevin, oh, Kevin, Kevin versus the league dad. <laughs> Dude, there's so many 1v1s. Uh, yes. Okay, Alistair, you mean, we need a Too 1v1. Too many 1v1s. We need a 1v1. What's up? From Alistair, what do you mean? I know. <laughs> Yumi versus Seraphine. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Bro, I'll just oh my God. flying armbar you. Uh, what, what? Oh, gosh. Dude, I have a ninja. COVID, man. COVID. We can't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just kidding. You can't right. do that. That's going to give you COVID. <laughs> Forget your arm. COVID, man. All right. Uh, team Liquid yeah, versus... Wait, hold up. I got a sword. I have a... Wait, you said you said coin was TSM? Yeah, coin's TSM. Yeah, coin's TSM. I know what these TSM. two idiots are. Kevin's Team Liquid. Lee Dead's TSM. Yeah. It's just obvious. It... It's like... Ah, you know I'm yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know what I'm. You just saw us defeat C9 and Dick, TSM lose his dick. Yeah, it's just terrible. It's, it's just awful. I just don't know. They're both dead. Yeah. I don't. They're both good and bad. Like, they're both. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, Alistair Mitchell, what are you guys? Alistair, go first. There you go first. I love it. Okay. This is so hard, That's man. Great. This was really it hard. Is. It's, okay. it's not hard. TSM. Dude, Team Liquid was looking really it's bad, great. and then maybe C9 looking much better, right? And then TSM was looking so good, and then it looked so bad against Dignitas. Like, it's so hard. It's literally like they're the same. Can I say it's a tie? Like, they're the same, man. Um, yeah, it is kind of hard I mean, because of how wanna forfeit points for this week. No, I, I don't no, mind. No, no. You just don't get it. You want to? Oh, no, I'm going TSM because I believe. <laughs> who? Oh, who to get that one? Uh, I believe. Re- I believe Reggie will redeem himself by really. From his I don't think du- much is redeeming his comments on <laughs> oh, Twitter. Really. <laughs> see, see, Steve he just doesn't say like they need bad. to stop. Where's Steve at, bro? See, so maybe I should just vote Team Liquid because of that. TL, TL's winning the Twitter <laughs> battle. He just <laughs> doesn't type. It's so smart. He Very probably true. hasn't even looked on Twitter. He's like, what's he's going on? He's just too busy spending no, a bathtub of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make money. Don't be that All dumb. Right. I, uh, it's really that simple. Because me and League Dead have a 1v1 already, I'm going to use them. Also, I do uh, think he's... that the things that they messed up against the dig team are very easy to fix. We talked about that already, right? They yeah. are very easy to fix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I. They just look so clean when they win, man. I mean... And I still felt like they had a chance against Dig. They mental uh, booms, yeah. Yeah, they mental, mental booms so, so hard. Yeah. I think TSM in their wins recently, because I give so much to like recency, right? And quality of wins, like, mm-hmm. they were sure. so clean, dude. Like, their TSM wins were so clean this weekend and last weekend. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing TSM. I don't oh, want man. to, but I am. Extending, extending an olive no, branch. I, I, I dig I, it. I, it's, a, it's a very tense. All right, Alistair, come branch. on. <laughs> Stop dodging the question. Just coin flip it. You might as well. Just go with the coin. Coin flip it. And oh, Oh, Kevin. (laughs) All right. I was here for TLC nine. I was here for TLC (laughs) seven. I'll see y'all next week. The the coin. The coin Uh, just double head. Yeah. On TLC. Wow. Okay. EG versus FlyQuest. I'm going EG. Uh, EG. EG. Okay. This, uh, Jose Diodo is really good. That's still true, but FlyQuest is... Yeah, I feel game. so yeah, bad, I'm, I'm, man, for Jose Diodo. The jungle, really to watch. I, I still put Jose Diodo as, a top, as one of the top three junglers, but God, Licorice is so bad. Mm-hmm. He looks so bad. Oh, so man. What is he happening? He's possibly the house. most impactful role. In, I mean, going into 11-14, it might be the most impactful role, to be honest, with the jungle nerfs. But, but, but I I don't know. I, I think I go EG. Yeah. FlyQuest is looking... Which sucks. Yeah. It's not a fun team to vote for. Yeah. It is. Nah. Mm-hmm. I'm still holding out hope that... Cause I think if Licorice gets better, they're, they're going to start winning. But I think if D- I Diamond know. needs to get better. That's my thing. Yes, Fly, or Licorice oh is playing poorly, but Diamond yes. is also... He's on my fantasy team, and he is just... Uh, ugh. Ugh. I'm sorry, buddy. All right, what's the rookie? Coin is fly quest. We have to give, give him a chance. Yep. Coin is what? Coin is fly quest. Viewers yeah. out there, right, give right. Diamond a chance to grow. 
He needs time. They suck now. Yes. Don't don't put him on your fantasy team. I mean, I'm team all like for that. Dad, but... Just don't be on my yeah. fantasy team when you're growing. That's all. <laughs> I mean, I I completely agree. That's why I said licorice, and not diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. yep, that's true. That's true. All right, CLG uh, versus hundred thieves. CLGs, ducks. Yikes. They are the. They have the closest one in eight team we've seen in a true. long time. You're not wrong. Uh, still suck. But yes, it's it's hundred thieves. Your CLG is magical at finding losses. They're a little bit better now with Roxa, but it's just this will be here's, here's my. It's been, I've been playing. They will randomly be hundred thieves here. Watch. Well, I'm going to vote against him. Here's my here's my theory. I give it like uh, I think they'll be good. I think CLG will be better. Will be good not this weekend, but the following oh, wow. weekend. Because I thought I was a firm believer that I thought they were better than their record show. Anyways, yes, they threw some of those games, but then inserting Brox though, as he just came in, I mean, obviously it's going to be some some growing pains there. So I'm giving them this week to kind of still find their. I think they may win a game this weekend. We'll see, but um, I think the following weekend we. We should see if they're still not good by that time. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be <laughs> good. The the <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But I, I'm still going 100 Thieves for this one, though. Alistair, what about you in the coin? I mean, I'm going to go 100 Thieves, but I do want to give props to Wild Turtle. He's, like, statistically, he's doing really well. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm for my fantasy, I'm honestly considering subbing out Tactical for Wild Turtle. Yeah. He's getting, well, Tactical's he's, been underperforming. He's getting more for points. Sure. Yeah. Also, yes. oh, crazy. God, I can't believe they lost that C9 game, man. Ah, well, they were in the base. Wild Turtle got a kill. They're just magical at finding. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the first penta loss I've seen in like ye- so two years. So long, you... man. So long. I don't even know, man. All right, Alistair, what does the coin say? Oh, coin. Uh, we got hundred thieves. Hundred thieves. All right, everybody's hundred thieves. All right, uh, immortals versus dignitas. I'm still on that Dignitas. Ding Dignitas as well. I think Dignitas is actually we have to give some props to them. We gotta give them some respect. We gotta put respect on Tardock's name, bro. They're the sleeper team. Yeah, he, for he, right now, I'm I think. excited about He this played team. more than one No imports. Yeah. Actually, no I think, imports. Yeah, I, I think Dignitas <laughs> and Immortals are sleeper teams. They're both good. But, I actually yeah. do think they're both good. I do think. I I, I, I underestimated Immortals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I agree but with you guys. I, 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 well, once they got their roster. Mm-hmm. Dude, this is actually harder than I thought. I'm still going Dignitas, but they are actually closer in my mind than I was initially putting them. Now that I think about Immortals and their their uh, how they played this weekend, Xerxy has uh, been actually performing really well. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going Dignitas. I like yeah. Neo. Neo's cool. And and he Xerxy had said in an interview too that he's like, I don't think people realize just how little time we had to uh, oh, kind of yeah. practice. So he's he's now just getting his groove groove in there and i think he'll be really good so all right what about alistair kevin and coin um all right i'll, I'll go coin for... here you know what for Kev. i'm calling it now i think i'm gonna be a dignitas fan no imports give me the no import team baby. let's go let's go the mcdonald the mcdonald's, give me the McDonald's team, baby. team man McDonald's <laughs> give me that mcslushy i love that that's give me so those funny. McNuggets, bro give me that minimum right, wage coin 725 coin is imt Ooh. imt okay all right, coin. Uh, real quickly, while you're thinking there, Alistair, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about with McDonald's, <laughs> basically uh, in an interview, I think it was after the 100 Thieves Golden Guardians game, after that 56-minute game, was it that, where oh, Mark God. was on the analyst desk and was like, hey, mm-hmm. it took them a while to give me my Happy Meal, but at least they got the order right. And so <laughs> the people started making all the McDonald's memes and, uh, you know, Reggie calling Vulcan a minimum wage worker. Oh, my God, that kinda... game was painful. Just hits hits hard. So there's the McDonald's meme for you. All right, Alistair, enough stalling. What yeah, are you I will go Dignitas. All right, Dignitas. Ooh, okay, next game is Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. This is on Saturday. This is Team Liquid. Even you guys are going I to am, I, obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This is going to be the really one where they just get they get 3K ahead in the mid game, and then they just take a bad fight, yeah. and they lose. Watch it happen, bro. All right, cool. I'm still voting Team Liquid, though. Quinn's TL. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll yeah. watch it happen. We'll all get it wrong yeah, we'll together. We'll get it wrong together, but, you know, it happened, like, so many times this weekend and the weekend before, where they're just ahead because yeah. of better laning, and then they just take a bad fight and lose. <laughs> they lost right. one game this weekend. They won two Whatever, out of three. Bro. We won against okay, the Okay, Mr. TL. Whatever. 
Bruh. Yeah. No, you're the one who's coming in. Like, I'm gonna ignore the whole game and just say that it was C9 who misdrafted. That is <laughs> that is a very normal reaction to your team losing. What, C9? Mm, interesting. Yeah, I'm a big fan now, buddy. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, no that's how C9 fans no, are. No, no, too. I'm a so big fan. Wow. I'm calling me out for If you go in the closet, come in Dang. with the C9 fans. fans please don't take offense to Wait, this I need, I need that. I, w I need CLG to be relevant so that, that meme can come back. <laughs> Which meme? The, the one where you go in the closet with like the CLG shirt and come out with the C9 or the TSM. I, I forget what it is, yeah, but it's yeah. so funny. That was funny. That's okay. a good one. All right. Uh, Anyways. C9 versus EG. Oh my god, did EG win nine. the last time? Or was EG uh, won the last bout and it wasn't close. Uh, they also beat EG oh, also beat Team Liquid. Liquid <laughs> yeah, they beat the top like yeah. top EG two or three the teams reverse projected teams. Sleep, and sleeper they... team. They beat the top teams and lose to the worst teams. Yeah. They they and played the level of their competition. It's not close. <gasps> oh no. Alright. Uh coin is EG. Who did EG we'll start lose? with that? EG lost to um, they beat CLG, so, and they lost to, where did they lose? TSM. Oh, they lost to TSM. Uh, yep. they got destroyed by TSM, yep. actually. I'm going Cloud9 for the record. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I will too. About that. They're, they're, oh, yeah, Dimitas beat EG last weekend. That's right. That's right, that's right. All right, so all of us are Cloud9, and Mitchell, Immortals and Dignitas beat them last weekend. I forgot about, yeah, EG is so weird, man. Uh, I think I'm going C9, because... Mm -hmm. This was just like okay, so like they're just a hard team to predict, period. You know? They just yeah. are. So I, I, I think just like predict for the average is fine. Just like we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Um Dignitas versus Hundred Thieves. I think this is actually gonna be a, a little tricky. One. Hundred Thieves is looking mm. very I think they're gonna get hit by the general nerf pretty hard. I mean closer is kind of their their All guy. Right. I'm going dig and the coin is dig. Oh, oh you're just going dig. Yeah, Dardoch. Yeah, I'm. I'm straight up. I'm just going to say dig. Dardoch is able to play Skarner. That gives me hope. Skarner's going to be broken on the next patch. Hmm. I'm going dig. Wasn't Dignitas like fake out in Sligo? Weren't they on Hundred yes, Thieves? Sir. Yep, they were. They were the 100 Thieves native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so 100 Thieves was 10th place with their main roster, and then they replaced their top in... That's when uh, Someday was in Academy for a whole, for a whole split. Yep. yep. Oh, man, this is yeah, tough. Yeah, it is tough. Because think... 100 Thieves is... They kind of ended their weekend kind of badly with that loss to Golden Guardians. Yeah. They looked really bad. I think I'm going I'm going Dignitas. Ooh, really I'm going Dignitas. Ball. It's one of the worst games you it's one of the funnest games you've seen, but one, one of, the of those worst. games where you just yeah. say, I hate North America. Ha 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 with a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it <laughs> a lot. Um, Wait, so I'm Mitchell, are you Dignitas? Dignitas. Yeah, here's okay. Dignitas, I'm Dignitas. Dig. Hundred okay. Thieves just ended way too weak. And Demont more importantly, in my mind, is Demonte played super poorly. Three games in a row last week. I was not impressed at all with his yeah, play or his. I, I agree. I mean, he even had a game yeah. where I think he was TF somewhere in there, and yeah, I was. Yeah, his wasn't TF even good. looked inconsequential. You forgot yeah. he played TF probably yeah. just because it was so uncharacteristic. Mm -hmm. And closer didn't have good games either. Let's not ignore the fact that he he's their best player or second best player, and he's not playing well. Yeah. Uh, so okay, yeah, I think Dignitas. Oh was my god! Did all we right. all just vote against Hundred Thieves? <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah, Cow. unfortunately, it was a, it, that that GGS game was like GGS. All credit to them, but four barons and two elders later, in my, my heart <laughs> never forget. How can you? It's burned in your brain. That was a great oh, way to damn. open up for C9 TL the game after them. It was like, all right, we sure, have this game. Oh, that for game. sure. <laughs> like, please. All right, well, I okay. think we can breeze through the next two games. Yeah, I'm gonna say TSM for the TSM versus CLG. Uh, TSM and then ING. Like CLG. I mean, Y'all are trolling CLG. if you say. Just, yeah, I agree. TSM Immortals. Uh, are you actually saying CLG? Or are you yeah. just. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I was like, really? <laughs> He's never used that joke you, before. <laughs> He's never used it before. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, I'm okay. not gonna I'm not gonna lie, every time you do it, I for a second go, Huh? <laughs> and then I'm like, I oh, do come it for on. you. You don't talk to Mitchell as much as I do. <laughs> Thanks, man. My boomer brain, you still get me. Hey, all right, Alistair, what do the coins say for those two? Oh, right. Uh, T 
TSM game is it's Go Steel G, no. and hmm. next okay. game is Contrarian. IMT. So what's 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 the second game? IMT versus GG Golden Guardians. Oh yeah, yeah. No Immortals. Yeah. yeah, I don't think Golden Guardians is looking too I mean, they just I told you I, they're my tenth place they team, man. I still think CLG. Thieves, <gasps> Yeah, in did like they? the 56 was, minute yeah. game. Yeah. Was was like, I mean, I did say Golden Guardians is going to be a bad team that randomly takes games off of top teams. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a comment that's very easy to say. Yes, I know it is. All you have to do is <laughs> it's randomly win a game once in your split. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yes, you are right. Uh, yeah. Let's just move on to FlyQuest TSM. Okay, TSM. Flyquest TSM. Flyquest TSM. Flyquest TSM. Interesting compared TSM. to TSM. 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 Hashtag I think TSM is still a lot better than FlyQuest right All now. All right, what is uh, Coin say? Yo, what happened with Speed? He used to be so good with the smite. TSM. He was the smite god last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't him, but what did well, you say, Alistair? Uh, Coin's TSM. Okay. All right, this one's pretty good. 100 Thieves versus oh, C9. Oh, C9 was this every it time. Is. This, should, this is actually first for a second, if you really think yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, C9 uh, beat him in the 3-2 series. C9 beat him earlier in the year. I'm going C9. Yeah, I have, I'm Point going is C9. C9. I'm going C9. I'm going C9. I'm going C9. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Cloud9 as well. If we if you vote Dig over 100 Thieves, you cannot vote 100 Thieves over C9, especially with their Ooh, head to head. It's just hard to vote. Every team is that. very yeah. inconsistent in this league right now. So They yeah. are. They are. But 100 Thieves looked consistently I would also great, say, but... surprisingly, Cloud9 is the most consistent team in who they beat, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, they always beat the worst true. teams. Losing to the first or second projected team is not being yeah, consistent. Yeah, yeah. But then the, the TSM, first or second team is TL, 100 Thieves, they're all very inconsistent right now. Yeah. I mean, Sven hasn't been running it like he was last year. He's been playing really well. It makes it a lot easier when oh you're in carries and five deaths every God, game. God, Alistair's a Sven mm -hmm. fan now. Let's go. God, he hates us. <laughs> <laughs> what, universe, what universe are we living oh, in? Boy, this been so good. For you guys, for newer listeners, Sven... I mean, uh, Alistair really, really hates Sven. No, loves, I don't. Oh, he has a personal vendetta he hates, against Sven. Loves uh, Sven. He has a, I'm gonna I get bet a personal you, vendetta you know, it's you so guys. dark in his room right now, but I bet you if you turned on the light, there'd be like a big poster. Sven no, this is right a dark there. board. Yeah, yeah, dark board. <laughs> oh, dark board. Was I mean, pro more like the cardboard box. Like, <laughs> I, you know, but, you know. no, all right. All I have is let's, duck. let's move on yeah. from these shenanigans. Immortals versus Team Liquid. I got Team Liquid. Liquid. This is one where Immortals. We'll randomly win, but I'm still voting Team Liquid. This is the first, wasn't this, this is the first Team Liquid loss. Where Alfari got dumpstered. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, but they fixed liquid. their mistakes because we saw them against C9, right? <laughs> Come yeah, on. yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. Don't okay. even, don't add real, real, real don't, don't even, don't, <laughs> even don't, don't forget to vote in Discord. Me or Mitchell? Dude, people are just going to mm -hmm. vote one to on spite one. me because they know me, bro. <laughs> they yeah. really are. Uh -huh. I'll take it. You <laughs> gotta invite people who don't know you. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Right. Did the coin say immortals? Oh, for no, team, coin I, guess. I don't think. All right, coin is I empty. Okay, what do you say, Alistair? Wait, wait, wait. Um, who's I empty's bot lane again? They are. Nobody cares. This is Raze and Destiny. Please. Yeah, yeah Raze and Destiny. Uh Raising Destiny or, or Tactical Core JJ? Tactical Come on, core I mean, yeah. yeah. Even if Tactical's not playing well, Core JJ is still Core JJ, my friend. Patch. No more... Uh, yeah, Samira's died. No more Samira for Sir, Sir Tactical to just... Samira died. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just... Yeah, I think I have to go TL. Oh, I mean... Okay. I... There's... There's a part of the back what of the head is, telling me what to is, go. What is racking your brain about this right now? Because I don't see it. I see it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but there's a part of me saying He just saying has a feeling, IMT. I think. It's going to be IMT, and I'm... Okay. Let me let me put an asterisk. You can vote for TL, but I'm going to put an asterisk that Alistair felt some way. <laughs> you know what? I'll give you... 
I'm just gonna put an asterisk that literally everyone in this podcast other than me puts an asterisk after every scene I predict or <laughs> TL prediction saying Not me. I think TL's gonna lose this one. I don't. Didn't you say that you thought TL was gonna randomly lose? Oh no no. Yeah, no, Mick, I, yeah, that. no I think TL's okay, gonna so randomly lose. Me and League that me and League that don't try to hedge our, our votes. And if, T- if I say TL's gonna lose like to TSM, I mean yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm they are losing. Yeah, I, don't know. I, 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 I completely don't think TSM or TL is going to win, but for some reason something's telling me to, to say I am T. Okay, how about okay. this, Alistair? Well, if you are in last place, we'll give you Half a point if you get this one right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Every what? one of no. your half Hell no. I want to see him play. I want to see him play. I don't want no. You, I don't want your cookie points. Oh, but I mean, half a right, point doesn't do anything. After production, can you tell us? No can you points? tell us what the points are actually at? Because I know that you guys are tied for first, but since I got first this week, I'm curious how. Look close at the. Is. Look at. I'm in Discord right now and recording, so I can't oh, actually I'll look at check. It, then. it go under the predictions channel. So Alistair is 37. Kevin is 43. Mitchell and the lead dead are 44. And the point is 32. So Alistair is doing better than the coin. Alistair is yes. beating the coin by five. Yeah. There Proud you go. Everybody. Okay, let's move on. Are you Team Liquid, Alistair? Please just say yeah. Team Liquid so we can move yeah. on. Yeah, no, I said TL. I already said okay. TL. I, I said I think she just wanted his... Win, but for we spent way too much time on that easy prediction. We have an prediction. obituary for Immortals, <laughs> just, even though we're just trying just to say Team Liquid. Let's just okay. Okay. Team All right, we can, we can speed run the last two. Okay. Uh, Golden Guardians versus EG. I got EG. Uh, EG, what is the point speed run then? <laughs> he almost got me again. <laughs> he almost got we'll me. Again. All right, coin, yeah. coin went EG and then dig. Okay. All right. All right. Let me just take a look at this real quick. It looks like we have dig going three, three, uh, three and zero wow. this week. Uh, let's yeah, see. Wow. We have C nine going three and zero. Are we talking about the patch think- boys? Just curious. Um, no, I think we talk about that next time. No, but the patch drops this for this okay. week. Yeah, this is oh, gonna be playing it? a new patch. Uh, okay. I mean, we can. What do you guys want to mention? I don't think with... we go deep into All it. All right, super quickly then, since I am the jungler of Lotus White, uh, jungle is getting nerfed substantially, but because mm-hmm. jungle is so OP, jungle is still gonna be super strong, and all the same champions are still super strong. Short, sweet, and simple, and Samir's getting gutted. I agree. Uh, I think with those jungle changes, would you guys think... Now, you guys told me, because I haven't played in a while because I've been working on Mm -hmm. other stuff, but you guys told me that the jungle nerfs weren't as bad as what, you know, everybody was thinking they were going to be, how, you know... My my opinion on the jungle is that the nerfs were very substantial and big, but jungle was so unbelievably broken that it's still going to be really, really good. So, there you go. I I agree. (laughs) Fair enough. I did play one game, and yeah, it felt li- like you feel it for sure, but it definitely didn't feel like as terrible as I thought. I'm just going to keep playing that. Give me some quick numbers. You get 40 gold and about 8 to 9% less XP for every full clear, which is massive, by the way. Yeah. But because Dribble's so OP, okay, mm-hmm. you're still good. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, it's- yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any other uh, things y'all wanted to mention? Okay. I will say... Uh, did you... <laughs> Come on, man! What are you gonna uh, give up uh, on this champion? It's not Jinx coming. Is honestly top three to carry right it's now. It's dominating yeah. Solo it is, right now. It's dominating Jinx Solo is so right good. Now. And if, it's and high low Solo if we don't see it this confident. weekend, I am going to tilt to <laughs> Mars, bro. I am going to be so mad. Oh man! Jinx will happen. Alistar will lose to the coin next week. He's Alistar is gonna be under the chair. Just in complete darkness. <laughs> Hello, darkness. Bro, I will sit under my desk for the next podcast. I... Anybody want to make anybody want to make a bet with Alistair? No. Uh, no, if, Kevin oh, Mitchell. I've been watching my high yellow friends right. play Jinx all the time. No, all they see in high yellow Jinx. That's Alistair right there. <laughs> <laughs> he was freaking sweat. Hey, if you guys don't know, last week me and Alistair made a bet uh, for these past games that if TSM went three and zero, oh, he was gonna have to write TSM win on his face, <laughs> and if TSM went zero oh and three, I was gonna have to write TSM socks on my face, and boy was he sweating <laughs> when TSM almost won 3 and 0 but luckily he escaped uh death so thankfully right now he's making no more bets so it's cool it's safe play uh any other patch patch things you guys want to talk about? I will say Skarner Mitchell you were right about that Skarner we're seeing a lot yep. of Skarner now uh you made that Skarner a couple couple weeks ago but uh we've definitely been seeing a lot of Skarner especially in pro play more so good Hector, call there more Udyr, more Skarner mm-hmm. yeah same yep. thing uh, Brom, Caitlin, actually. Um, I think we'll see a little bit less priority on the Kaisa. We'll see mm-hmm. Jinx and Caitlyn a little bit more. 
Um, I don't think we'll see a ton of Caitlyn. I think she's good, but not amazing. Braum got 20 mm. seconds off of his ultimate, and with a lot of the champions, especially like Seraphine, we, we will see mm -hmm. Braum bans at least. Uh, if they're oh, gonna early true. pick Seraphine. Yeah. Interesting. That's a good yeah. point. Udia will okay. still be the most broken champion in the game. Sad. We might yes. see Lee Sin. I guess we might, Lee Sin. Yeah, we might see Lee Sin. Yeah, we might see Lee Yankos has been spamming it in solo queue. He says it's good, but it's Yankos, so, you know, okay. it's G2. We might actually see Vagar. Thanks. Maybe? Into his ear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just looked every character that's, yeah. that's like yeah. kind of played. No, that, that's mm, what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, Vagar's good yeah. into his ear. Well, you would probably see. I want to see Jensen play him. Old Vagar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Vagar. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, sounds good. Anything else? You guys good to go? I think we covered just about everything we needed to. Remember, guys, join the Discord. We want this to be your podcast. So the link will be in the show notes or wherever I'm posting a description, you know, wherever you're viewing this and whether YouTube or if it's on Twitter or whatever. Um, or you could just tweet us at the All In Podcast and we'll get you that link for sure because we want you to join the discussion. Vote for me, not Mitchell. Tell him how wrong he is for sure. Uh, if you have any questions, Questions, feel free to email us at questions at the allinpod.com. Yes, that's right. We have a new email address because pretty soon we will also have a brand new website. So big things happening, and we hope that you are with us for the journey. It's been fun so far, and I can't wait to take it to the next level. Thank you again to my awesome co host Kevin, Mitchell, Alistair. Guys, you guys are awesome. I love that we could just debate, yell at each other, have fun, and talk about the game all the time because it's super fun. So until next time, guys enjoy your climb on the rift try not to be too toxic maybe a little toxic not too toxic and we'll see you guys on the next episode peace